So for today's project, I have something I've been meaning to get around to for a while. I have a buddy who works in heavy duty, uh, well, heavy equipment anyway, uh, and he works on especially highway tractors, uh, semi trucks, sort of things. The thing is, one of the thing, one of the tools that he figures he could actually really use is something similar to what we use at uh, well, a Chrysler dealer, and it's what's called a scooter block. It's one of these. It's a little block like, just a little block like this. Borrowed this from work. My bot or my supervisor let me borrow it for just you know for the weekend. And uh, from that, I was then able to make up my CAD drawing with the measurements and such that I'll need to you know make one like this. What it does is it allows you to take a dial indicator, mount it up in there, clamp the little uh, set screw tight, and then as you go over a flat surface into a dished cavity or a, a uh, protruding cap or a protrusion or whatever it'll let the plunger move one way or the other one way or the other to um, allow you to see whether the piece that you're working on is higher or lower than the part you're trying to reference or part you're trying to measure so I mean yeah you can buy them whatever but the thing is you know huh, he doesn't have a whole lot of pile of money for tooling as well and so I mean we're gonna make something work if I was to make one exactly like the uh, uh, Miller Special Tool, I would need uh, one inch square stock that's you know perfectly clean, whatever. Now, I do have some mystery bar here. It's got a little bit of paint and scale on the outside. And because of the fact that really only the width, only the width here is affected as far as being one full inch, what we'll do is we're going to clean up this other bar here because it only needs to be three quarters of an inch high. If it happens to be 980 instead of uh, the full one inch, then so be it. I just, I'll just adjust for the center of that. So what we need to do first off is I want to take this bar. Um, I will, what we'll do is we'll cut off, because it says here it would be 2.6 inches as far as overall length. What I'm going to do is I'll take it over to the bandsaw and we'll cut it off, because uh, I want to make a couple of these, because I've actually got a couple buddies who want them. And we'll, we're going to cut off a piece that, uh, or a couple pieces that'll be probably 5.3, 5.4. That allows cleanup on the ends, and so that way we can make uh, we can make four of these. Uh, once we've once we've actually made or cut the the, the piece here uh, and made cut it to length, cut it to height, and we'll make the uh, the basic shape of this guy. Uh, what we'll do then is we'll uh, drill and uh, counter bore the holes because it's got a quarter inch hole that goes all the way through and a half inch hole that goes down uh, 450 thousandths into this uh, protrusion here which is a half, uh, half an inch thick. After that we'll make the sleeve and once we make the sleeve we're going to turn the sleeve and then split the edge. So we'll start by cleaning up we'll start by cleaning up this piece of material and go from there. Alright so I need to cut it to length so we'll measure out our length here now 2.6 times 2, 5.2, uh, be roughly just shy of five and a quarter. Let's take it out to about five and three eighths, five and seven sixteenths maybe, five and seven sixteenths. That leaves us a little bit extra material to play with. So we'll use the bandsaw, knock it off on those two points, and then uh, clean it up. To Unfortunately, my uh, bandsaw blade is getting a little bit dull. But one thing I did check on this before I mounted it up in the saw was I checked with a file and made sure that the uh, file would actually bite into the material. That way, at least I know that if the file will bite into the material, it will uh, uh, the bandsaw will at least be able to cut it. As well, we're going to be using a high-speed steel end mill, so I don't really want to be wrecking a, an end mill if not necessary. Yep, this is 400 of the best dollars I've ever spent. Now that our parts are deburred, I got my uh, one block here. What we'll do is we'll set it up in the vise. Make sure the bottoms of the the bottom rungs of the vise are clean. Okay. 
Now again, on this surface here, we're just going to skim this surface, flip it, skim the other side, and that's going to be our width. Uh, it'll be slightly under one inch, but again, this is the material I have. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to have to work with it. Let's knock it down. Make sure. Oh. There we go. So it's solidly in there. The parallels aren't moving. That's what we're looking for. So we, we have it seated against the bottom uh, surface of the mill vise. Now we're going to use our 18 volt Ryobi power draw bar tool. Knock the, uh, knock the drill chuck out from the last job we were working on a while back. And here's hoping they there you go, head was high enough to get it out of the way. I'm going to use a three quarter inch end mill. So we'll use a three quarter inch collet. Come on, there we go. A little sticky getting it in there to start with. Get that started. Now I'm going to use a three quarter inch end mill, as I say. It's a double ended one I got surplus on eBay but it seems to be working for what I need it for I've already set the uh, mill speed for 440 rpm uh, usual you know the usual cutting speed times four divided by diameter thing well high-speed steel in steel you're looking 100 uh, surface feet per minute times four for the calculation gives you 400 divided by the diameter of the tool or the piece of material if you're turning. It's a three quarter inch end mill, so it basically comes up to 533 uh, RPM. Uh, the closest I have on this mill is 440 RPM, so that's what it's set to. So, without further ado, what we'll do is bring it down close. We'll lock the quill for a moment here. So we'll do this side, then what I'm probably going to do is take, oh my, ah. okay, well, here we go. Yeah, it looks like I'm, I've just reached the end of my travel, what I'll do is I'll, I'll do this one here, the other one I'll move over to the other side of the vise a little bit further when I do the next one. But I'm going to do this dimension first, or this side, pull this part out, put the next part in, let it run, and then that's when I'll... Uh, I'll have one clean surface on each part. At that point, what I'll do is uh, I'll then adjust the tool down, tool bit down to do the back side of one of them, and then I'll just leave it at the same setting to do the second one. Okay, we're touched off. A little bit of cutting oil. We'll give it a, about a five thou depth of cut, five six thou depth of cut. Yep, that's cleaning up nicely enough. And my furnace is on again. And like I say, pretty much every video, it'd be nice to have uh, my flood coolant set up, but I just haven't gotten it set up yet. Flood coolant or uh, some form of uh, mist.
that's one of them. What I'm going to do here, oh yeah, I clean up, clean up reasonably well. A little, yeah. So now what we'll do is we'll pull this guy out. There we go. We're snug. We're in place. Let's move the table back over this way a bit. So we'll take the first pass. Something about watching metal peel that just never gets old. Let's flip it. Wipe the part. Slide her back in. Lock our Y. Light it up. And let's see where we're sitting. Might just have a light scratch. Yep, good. Let's take a 12 thou depth of cut. There we go. So, there you go, two sides of that block. I'm sure it's not gonna get hung up on any bits and pieces. There we go. A little clamp, snug. Smack, smack, snug, smack, smack. The uh, parallels won't move, which is good. Alrighty, here we go. Block number two, backside pass. Everything's locked. Now I'm sure if there are any licensed machinists out there, you're probably cringing at some of the stuff I do. Hey, if you're actually a licensed machinist, 
and you got ideas and suggestions on how to do things better, I'm all ears. Because I am always happy to learn something new. And that's, I think that's part of my problem is I'm just insatiably curious. Ask my poor mother. Yeah, she'd have a story or two to tell you. Yeah, we'll use that. Uh, there's a little bit of the scale that's still showing here, less uh, less on this side. What we'll do is we'll we have to cut this to three quarters thick, so we'll we'll peel the three the quarter inch off the one side. Okay, put a little bit of tension on the quill spindle. In the quill, bring it down slowly. So it touches. Okay, we're touching. All right, so let's do let's do a fifteen thou. Actually, let's do a twenty thou depth of cut. Do a roughly twenty thou depth of cut. And we'll take her nice and slow. the back side of this one. Time to do the other one. Tighten, smack, tighten, smack, 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 tighten, smack, smack. There we go. steps probably would have been unnecessary had I started with a nice piece of cold roll like the original tool was. Um, the original tool you can even see where the uh, you can see the finish on the the unmachined surfaces where it was it's a piece of cold rolled. I mean this is a this is a piece of a hot rolled something or other. So that's like I say why it's unfortunate we're gonna have to mill the scale off the sides just to make it well, again, it's more visually appealing this way. Functionally, I could have just milled the bottom and called it done. Milled the bottom, drilled the hole, counterboard the hole, and it would have been there, but... I'd rather, I'd rather make it look nice if I could all help it.
So that deals with that. We now have a nice square block, or well, on three surfaces. I'm gonna have to, let's pull this quill up so I don't cut myself. And then the parallels come out because we are going to need a taller set of parallels. Hmm. Wipe the parallels down. We're going to take a skim pass on this top surface first. Once we take a skim pass on this surface, then we'll see where exactly it, um, uh, where it's sitting as far as height. And then from there, we'll, uh, we'll adjust our tool bit. So that should be 100 thou depth of cut. Let's see how it handles it. out of curiosity, I wonder how thick this thing is. Uh, my suspicion is somewhere around the neighborhood of uh, 7 eighths. Hmm. 889-890. You know, what I think I might do, I think I may actually deviate from the, I might just deviate from the original tool in one way. I think I'm going to leave this at 890. Still make the lip where the dial indicator sits. I'll make that still the half inch, but that actually lifts it off the deck of whatever we're working on slightly. I think I might leave it thicker. Um, I know it's a deviation from the original tool, but whatever, we're making a tool to work. It you know, may not necessarily match the original. It's, it's made for comparative measurement. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a problem functionally. So anyway, I'm going to put the other piece in and then we'll, uh, what I'm going to do is I'll mill the other one down to 890 just like this. I'm not going to bore you with doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, and then once I get that to that point, what we're going to do is we're going to cut these in half down the center, and then we'll clean up the ends to length, and then we'll make the pot or the uh, uh, the undercuts on either end for the overhang where the dial indicator sits. Okay, so uh, I just went and cut the uh, pieces off in half. Well, roughly half, and then uh, they're all sitting on a parallel on the bottom. And then what I'm going to do is use, if I, well, I set it down here somewhere, if I can find it, I will use my little square and uh, mount them up 
or set them up so that they are actually square to the mill jaws, square to the table, which is pretty much there. I'm going to be very careful. I'm just going to start with the tallest one. I'm just going to take these down. I'm going to take these down to uh, uh, 2.6. Well, basically make this flat. I'm going to flip them over and then make them all the same height at 2.6 inches. 10 thou. ways but getting closer I'm starting to touch off on that end piece Now the bottoms of the uh, the bottoms of these pieces are not going to be square. As they simply won't be. Because they were they came off of the um, off the bandsaw. But theoretically, by doing this, we should have one square edge to each of them. We should have one square into each of these. I'm going to have to make one more pass after this. Once we have a square end to each of them, then from there, and once I set them on the parallel on the bottom, then I should be able to do my cuts to make it cuts to final length. There we go. One more pass. I think I'm just going to take a 20. There. 20 thou depth of cut. 
Yeah, there we go. That first one was the shortest, so this will actually clean them all up to the same, well, basically the same height on this end in relation to the vise. Set up. There we go. Flip this whole mess upside down. Those wiped. Set them in place. Set my packing, or well, a piece of aluminum. Make sure we're still square. Yep, good enough. There we go. go. Now all I need to do is I'm, I'm going to make one uh, one skim pass, or well, I can feel these two on the end are a little higher, so I'm going to make enough of a skim pass on all of them to the, get them all to the right height, or same height, then I'm going to measure and make sure that I have the correct length overall. So we're going to cut the, we're going to cut them to fully the length on the, in this operation. Okay, so that makes a 25 thou depth of cut. Kind of curious how this is going to work. I'm going to make a nice slow feed. Make a nice slow feed. See how this works. I'm hoping I at least scratch all of them. And again, using my little squeezy bottle in lieu of uh, flood coolant or some sort of cooling mist. Great. Oh, 2.608 is what it says. So, simple enough. I'm going to dial in. That running again. Loosen off the collar or the quill a little bit. We're gonna go down eight thou. And there we go. This should this will cut us to full length. Here we go. So, two point five, two point five nine nine and a half, according to that. So I think those are good. Pull this back up. They're all sort of stuck together from, from being pressed together as they're being cut. Yeah, 
Oh, it's starting to break apart. 